All right, guys, so you know how the old saying goes. In order to piss off a conservative, you lie to him. In order to piss off a liberal, you tell them the truth, okay? And Lori Lightfoot can't handle the truth and facts because every time she presented with the truth and facts, she absolutely loses it, okay? And she continues to lose it on this reporter, Mr. William J. Kelly, who is doing some excellent journalism, right? Lord forbid you do some journalism in 2022. You press politicians and some of these leaders with hard questions, right? You present facts and data to them, right? Lord forbid you do that, okay? It's almost as if you committed some type of crime. As Lori Lightfoot once again is going to melt down on this man uh, because he is simply trying to hold her accountable for the terrible job that she has done in her city. Now, I've done a video about this in the past in which Lori Lightfoot literally was visibly shaking while this man was spitting facts and statistics to her about how bad her city is in regards to crime and how people don't want to come to the city uh, as tourists because of crime, which is evidenced by the hotel occupancy rate being so low in Chicago, which is ultimately hurting business. Now, he is going to confront Lori Lightfoot once again about how crime rates are going up, okay, and other statistics that I think that the mayor should worry about, and she's going to lose it once again, and it's going to get to the point where uh, she literally is going to run away from this guy and his questions because she just can't handle the truth and facts anymore. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. The Palmer House has already is already in foreclosure. Other historic downtown hotels foreclosure. We have business owners that are uh, shortening their hours because their their workers are afraid to work after dark. You went on a taxpayer Sir, funded a tax. You, this is a very important one, question. No, I'm ask you one it's a very time. important question. I'm ask you one last Chicagoans are asking question. me to get ask to your you. Question. Or we're going to move on. Absolutely. You, question, you don't get to give a five-minute speech. Well, again, ain't it crazy how they say, oh, you don't get to give a five-minute speech, where it's like he's laying out context for the question that he's asking and why he's asking the question. See, what she doesn't like is the fact that he is simply coming to her with facts about how bad her city is being run, and then he's going to ask his question. But see, oh, no, I don't want you to, to state the facts in front of my audience. It might make me look bad, right? I don't want you to say how bad my city is doing before you ask your question. Because, again, um, that's not the narrative that I'm trying to push here, right? I'm trying to push the narrative that everything is rosy. Everything is good, okay? Again, these politicians hate being held accountable, right? Especially Democrats. They hate being held accountable. They can't stand facts, Every single time. I've sat here for an hour or two listening to speeches. I don't understand you, why. You the, just, this, this is a question that the people of Chicago ask, want to ask. Ask a question or we're turning off your mic. Absolutely. Off, ask a question. Right. You went on a taxpayer-funded business trip uh, to Paris, a party in Paris with your donors. Please ask your question, William. What, no. is, the, what is the actual... Uh, plan now, okay? We have crime is up, arrests are down, up, police you tell, you spiking. Tell what is your plan, you. finally, you at long last, at time. long last, what is your plan to, to stop you, violent crime? No, let me, let me respond. Please, Sir, and then tell, I have a follow-up, and then I have a follow-up. Every single time that you come, and I'm not going to let you tell that lie in this in You're this saying forum. that crime is not... Here's the, here's the I cannot believe these people are clapping for this woman. I cannot believe these people are clapping. Again, uh, you get what you deserve, right? You get what you vote for, man, <laughs> right? You're clapping for this. It's unbelievable. Here's the, here's the fact, if you would bother to actually look at the data that is on the police department website. Year to date, the police sir, year to date, sir, we are down 19% percent in shootings and year to date sir we are down 15 percent in homicides tell that story when you go on fox news or the other right-wing rags that you sell yourself to i want you to tell the truth about my city not the lies that you steal. well here's the truth <laughs> lori lightfoot he did not say or reference homicides and shootings which she is correct 
uh, they have gone down this year, even though they're still historically high, okay, and unacceptable, they have gone down. He said crime is going up, arrests are going down, which is a fact. In fact, <laughs> take a look at this news report about this very subject. New at 10, violent crimes continue to go up here in Chicago, but arrest rates aren't quite matching up at the same time. CBS 2's Sabrina Franza has been digging into those numbers. She is live outside CPD headquarters. Sabrina, what did you find? Hi, Erica. What we're finding is that crime rates are going up for many violent crimes while arrests go down. And it turns out the rate at which CPD has been solving cases for many violent crimes is at a shocking low. Take these numbers, for example. We crunch them using public city data. In 2022, there's been at least 2,422 robberies, but only 145 arrests, which is 41% less this year than 2019 before the pandemic when there were similar robbery rates, but nearly 250 arrests. In motor vehicle thefts, 3,980 this year so far, but only 100 and 36 arrests. That's about three out of every 100. You need to build trust and you need to have the trust of people in the community. You need witnesses to come forward. You need to be able to work together with people to solve crime. And what we've also seen at this time is that trust in police and it's almost like a vicious circle. Craig Futterman is a clinical professor of law at the University of Chicago Law School. He says there's also a police training and resource problem pushing these numbers down. And so there haven't been a sufficient number of one detectives to investigate and solve crime and take crimes like robbery seriously. All this family wants is their son's case taken seriously. Community, man, we got to stick together. It's too many of our young kids that's dying senselessly in these streets. There is one category of arrest that's actually gone up since 2019, weapons violations, up 19%. Of course, we did reach out to the Chicago Police Department for comment on all of this, asking why they think arrest rates have been so low. They told us that arrest rates are actually up for murders and aggravated battery comparing this year to last year. Our numbers compared to 2019 before the pandemic, before an arrest drop off. They also told us they're working with community organizations to get to the root cause of violent crime. Yeah. So as you heard there, and as you're looking at right here, um, yeah, Lori Lightfoot is right in the sense that yes, murders are down, shootings are down, but those are not the only violent crimes that are being committed. Almost every other violent crime is up, right? But she won't say pat on the back for it. Even though arrests are down, police aren't actually arresting these people for some of these other crimes. I mean, robbery matters assault matters right uh theft matters all those crimes matter right but for whatever reason again she wants credit for a half job and she wants to get mad and upset and throw a fit when a journalist actually does some journalism and calls her out on her half job again it's amazing how these democrats react when confronted with facts right it's amazing how they react so let's actually continue uh this press conference here I have a follow-up question. I have a follow-up question. Oh, I tell the truth. A follow-up question? My follow-up question. He confronts Lori Lightfoot again, okay, the next day. And this is her reaction. This, this is what happened. She literally runs away from the guy again, just like she ran away from him the day prior. Just a moment. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. actually talking. Oh, and I'd appreciate if you didn't interrupt me. And, and you haven't been called on, you know the rules. So I, you'll get called on when it's your time. William, thank you. You'll get called on when it's your time. William, thank you. Look, we'll work through it. I'm confident, but this is a great thing for the city. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cesar, Mayor Lightfoot, excuse me. Really? Okay. Okay, so there you go. Thank you so much. Right. <laughs> Mayor Lightfoot. Uh, this event isn't until July of 2023. Uh, hopefully, God willing, you won't be mayor by then. Hey, excuse me, dude. What are you doing? Do you <laughs> this this lunatic? I got a lunatic trying to attack me over here. Why does that keep happening? Uh, mayor Lightfoot. Thank you, Will. This event. Thank you. This event you. doesn't take place until July of 2023. Thank you. Yeah. 
Dude, you can't do that. That's not fair. All right, so anyway, so they actually told me that I'm not allowed, so, oh man. So sorry, that's actually, that's pretty, that's not cool, dude. That is not cool. Don't touch me. By the way, don't touch me, okay? Mayor Lightfoot, this event takes place in July of 2023. God willing. Hey, dude, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Back up. Back up. Back up. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Yeah. So, as you can see there, right? Lori Lightfoot not only melts down when confronted with facts, she refuses to take the reporter's second question, okay? Uh, basically running away from the interview, right? Running away from the question. Then the next day, she tells him that, hey, I will take your question when you're called on, right? When it's your turn, implying that I'm going to call on you and then abruptly ends the press conference and refuses to take questions. And then runs away, runs away from the reporter. And look, you can't say anything about it. You can't complain about the reporter following her because she's the same person that said that, hey, we got to take up arms, right? We need to call the arms over uh, the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade while woke revolutionary extremists were literally harassing and trying to intimidate Supreme Court judges at their homes and in restaurants. She was totally fine with that. Okay, totally fine with it. She's totally fine with people following around politicians, okay, for whatever reason. Okay, so you can't complain about it. You can't get upset about him doing that. And unlike the woke revolutionaries, the protesters, he's not protesting. He's a journalist. He's asking you questions. But again, I tried to tell you guys at the beginning how to piss off a liberal. Uh, tell them the truth, right? Present them with facts and they will get upset and they will melt down. Right. And that's exactly what happened to Lori Lightfoot. She continuously melts down when asked simple questions, questions that are real journalism from a guy who is not going to kiss her butt. Right. Again, it's amazing how that works. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.